2 Corinthians chapter 2. How can Satan get an advantage over us? Paul opens his heart to the saints. Before we get into our lesson, let's look at how to be saved. I declare the gospel by which ye are saved, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So we have to believe in our heart that Christ died on the cross for our sins, was buried in that tomb, and rose again the third day as prophesied, and then we will be saved. But if you're still not saved, read Romans chapters 1 through 5 over and over again until you are saved and sure that you're saved. Because what was our problem? Wherefore, as by one man, and that was Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Romans 5.12 So, sin entered the world by Adam, then death, spiritual death, and physical death um, passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Because we all, all sinned also. We inherited the sin nature, and then we sinned ourselves. So we were helpless and hopeless to save ourselves, because no one could keep the law, because we were born sinners. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Romans 4, 5. So if we don't try to keep the Ten Commandments, but if we just believe on what the Son of God has done, then that's counted to us for righteousness. So then we, when we believe that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again, and that he was our substitute, the Son of God, then we receive his righteousness, his life, his spirit in us by imputation. And this was God's solution to the sin problem. So let's get going. But I determined, the I being Paul, this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. So Paul had come to them in heaviness. He had come and given them a rebuke, a reprimand. Because in 13.1 of this letter, he says, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So he had, had not only come in Acts 18, but he had actually left Ephesus, sailed over to Corinth, rebuked them for not following him, and then gone back. Because what did Paul say in his um, last chapter at the end of chapter 1? Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul. You know, he, w he wants God to re bear record that to spare you, I came not as yet unto Corinth, to spare you another rebuke. Not for that we have dominion over your faith. We're not in charge of your faith. But we are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. So, when we have the Spirit of the Son of God in us, we can stand before the Holy Father. So what is this joy that Paul is talking about here, the, that he's helpers of? So we're going to find that out. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad, but the same which made, is made sorry by me? So if I make you sad by giving you a re rebuke or reprimand, you know, who's going to make me happy? Is it going to be the same one that I made sorry? And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. So he's writing this letter, and he had written the first Corinthians. And he's writing this letter too, so that they can 
you know, correct their error before he arrives and that everyone can have joy together because joy in heaven for preaching Paul's message from Christ. That's how we have joy. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly for you. So Paul wrote to clear up and correct them. And he did this, you know, with much anguish of heart and, and many tears, he wrote First Corinthians. Not that they should be made sorrow, sorry, but that they would know how, um, his love for them. Because it's loving to correct someone who is in error. But we need to do it gently. Okay. But if any have caused grief, he has not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. So part of you have grieved me. Okay. Paul's heart was broken because many in the body of Christ were not following him to follow Christ. So what was, you know, let's look at a little bit more at the problem at Corinth. Now, Paul said this in, in 1 Corinthians one twelve. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul. So some are following part, Paul in part. And I of Apollos, some were following Apollos. And I of Cephas, some were following Peter. And I of Christ, some were following Christ's earthly ministry. So, um, Paul is suffering because he's trying to tell the world that Christ had begun a new ministry and a new dispensation to a new group to live in heaven. And so, he wants everyone to follow him. It's okay to follow Apollos if, if you're following, if you know that he is following Paul. Okay. So what did Christ say? Christ, uh, well, Paul talked about what Christ said. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So, Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry came to the Jews to confirm the promises that he had made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. And so these are the Gentiles in prophecy, because if the Jews were saved, then they could go and be priests to the Gentiles in prophecy, so that everyone could glorify God for his mercy. So, division is what's happening at Corinth, which is like denominationalism. So, it's very important to know what happened at Pentecost. Peter stood up and said, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, Acts 2.16. So, he said that the coming of the Holy Ghost was prophesied by Joel. So, it was not a mystery. Because what's this about the last days? Well, it's the last days of the 490 years given to Daniel, the prophet. But here Peter quotes Joel in Acts 2.17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So, these are going to happen in prophecy. They're not happening now in mystery. Now God is talking to us through his word. And there's no more revelation. Then we find out in Hebrews that the last days that... Peter spoke about and Joel spoke about are going to continue. Hebrews 1 2. Hath in these last days of Daniel's timeline spoken unto us by his Son, 
whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So the worlds, it's a dispensation. He made the dispensations. And we're going to look at that on the timeline. So Peter's group was the little flock, and they were under the law. And he was speaking in Acts 2. But something happened in Acts 9 that was unprophesied. Christ appeared to Saul of Tarsus, known as Paul, and began a new ministry through him. And Paul had persecuted the little flock. So Paul is now preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, not prophesied, but now is made manifest. So this was a, a mystery, and so given to Paul from from Christ and the one apostle to the one body of Christ. So um, why is it so important to know when the body of Christ began? Because if you, it, the body of Christ did not begin in Acts 2, but it began in Acts 9. And if you don't get that right, you're going to get many things wrong about your idea of the Bible. For the past 2,000 years, Satan's strategy has been mixing Peter and Paul. So Paul's, Paul was in anguish of heart that part of the believers at Corinth followed the Hebrew preachers um, who did not follow him to follow Christ. They did not recognize but denied his apostleship, and they were oblivious to the new dispensation that had been a mystery. So they were, you know, telling people to follow Christ's earthly ministry or to follow, um, you know, Peter. So, um, you know, just like today, many Body of Christ members following the wrong minister, Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry, or the wrong apostle, which is Peter. So the problem was the same as it is today. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted by many. So he's talking about the man who had committed gross immorality with by fornication and sufficient to someone that has caused grief is um is was that punishment that was inflicted by many when they you know told him to leave the assembly so that contrarywise he ought rather to forgive him and comfort him lest perhaps such an one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow so now Paul is ready to forgive them him because he's changed his mind and he wants back in the assembly and he wants to live his life with on purpose, with meaning, and he wants to serve God and he wants to hear what God has to say by joining the assembly. And so now, you know, some of them are not wanting to let him back into the assembly. So Paul is telling them to, to let him back. Because he wants to live for God now. Wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. For to this end did I write that I should I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. So <clears throat> Paul wa wants to make sure that they follow his apostolic orders. And so they did right to have him go leave the assembly. Now they should do right by letting him back in. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices." So Paul can forgive you all in Christ. So we can read between the lines. Some of the people at Corinth were committing fornication because to not follow Paul is spiritual fornication or idolatry. 
So Satan's strategy is to divide and conquer. When we forgive others, we eliminate the wedge that Satan tries to drive between us. We have all made a mess of our lives. And Apostle Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. Romans 11.13 So he is speaking to the Gentiles during the dispensation of grace, which was a mystery. Satan was trying to discredit Paul in the eyes of his followers. So what did Paul say? Okay. But before I do that, let me just say, God is forming the body of Christ during mystery, which is the dispensation of grace, from Acts 9 to the rapture, to live in heaven. One that lives only for their pleasure is useless to God. What God thinks and values is in his word. And he inspired Paul to write, Be ye followers of me, even as I am also am of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11.1 1. Again, to not follow Paul is spiritual fornication or idolatry in this dispensation. Because we have to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 So we have to divide where God divides. The Bible has laid out prophecy, mystery, prophecy. So, um, from Genesis to Revelation, all of the Bible is truth. But we need to divide out the mystery truth from the prophecy truth. Because the mystery truth is for those who will live in heaven, while the prophecy truth is for those who will live on earth. So, <clears throat> um in prophecy the circumcision which are the jews abraham's seed who also inherited adam's sin nature will rule over the uncircumcision or the gentiles as priests and we found out that during um this time eventually jesus christ came and after three and a half years of ministry, he died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. Then he spoke to his followers for 40 days, and then he ascended up into heaven, and then he sent down the Holy Ghost and gave a renewed offer of the kingdom to the little flock. But the answer was, we will not have this man to rule over us. And Stephen was stoned. And then God was standing, Stephen saw God standing, the Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. He, Isaiah 3.13, Jesus Christ was ready to, um, you know, judge and make war, to open the seven seals. But instead, he interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery which began in Acts 9 when Christ appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, also known as Paul, and began the dispensation of grace in which he's saving the body of Christ to live in heaven. And then our group will end with another appearing of Jesus Christ to rapture us. So we're living within this parenthesis, which is called the mystery. And our doctrine is Romans to Philemon. Before that, Genesis to Acts 9 is prophecy. And then after our rapture, we go to the judgment seat of Christ for evaluation for service done on earth. We are the little black men. Today, Jews and Gentiles are on the same level, and they can all be saved by believing Paul's gospel and have eternal life in heaven. So, after our instructions, Paul will, I mean, God will begin the delayed or postponed tr seven years of tribulation where he's going to save more of Peter's group, the ones that began to be saved during Christ's earthly ministry. 
then Christ will have his second coming to set up his 1,000 year reign on earth, his first 1,000 years, and again the Jews will be priests to save Gentiles in prophecy. So that's Hebrews to Revelation is how to get through the tribulation and into the kingdom. So God interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery where Jews and Gentiles are on the same level instead of the Jews being over the Gentiles. So the mystery is a new chance for Gentiles to live in heaven. Today God is considering Jews as Gentiles. Furthermore, so we're continuing in verse 12. When I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, so it's Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, so he had an opportunity to preach in Troas. I had no rest in my spirit because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. So Paul didn't have any rest in his spirit because he was Titus didn't show up where the, he was supposed to meet Paul. And so he was worried that the Corinthians had done something to Titus because Titus was coming back from Corinth with a report and he was worried about the Corinthians. So he left Troas and he went into Macedonia, which is northern Greece, and he may have gone to Philippi. But and he ran into Titus. But yet uh, Paul, uh, Paul is is so happy that he forgets to, to mention that right here. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place okay so um we're we're sharing god's knowledge and and we're going to talk about how that's a savor or a, or a good fragrance for we are unto god a sweet savor of christ in them that are saved and in them that perish to the one we are a savor of death unto death and to the other the savor of life unto life and who is sufficient for these things for we are not as many which corrupt the word of god but as of sincerity but as of god in the sight of god speak we in christ so god changed the program nearly two thousand years ago because that's how long the dispensation of grace has nearly gone on and people are still trying to live under the old program they're still trying to follow Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So, but what did Paul say? But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was, get, was preached of me is not after man, neither, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1, 10, no, Galatians 1 11 and 12 so the, Paul's message was a revelation from Jesus Christ directly so we're sharing God's knowledge Christ is working in and through us Christ working in and through us is like a pleasant fragrance to God who is sufficient to have the responsibility of sharing the gospel that can determine the eternal destiny of people's souls so there's eternal consequences for not believing Paul's gospel. Paul and his helpers did not change or twist God's words or message. They did not corrupt the word of God. And they speak in Christ. God is speaking through Paul now. In order to copyright their modern Bibles, 20% of God's words are changed to different words and meanings. So it's best to just trust the King James Bible. Satan's policy of evil is to conceal the mystery Christ gave to us through Paul. So what did Peter say? Peter pointed people to Paul. Um, an account 
so he points the Jews to Paul. An account of the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. So the Lord is suffering long to bring salvation to save souls. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So Paul wrote a special letter to the little flock. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand. So some things were hard to understand because Peter wanted to live in, on earth and he didn't know about Paul's message till Paul told him. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or twist. They were twisting God, uh, Paul's words already. As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destructions. Second Peter 3.15 and 16. So Peter endorsed Paul. And Paul said something about the long suffering of Christ also. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So Paul is the leading sinner saved into our group. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16. So Paul was not the first sinner ever saved, but he was the first sinner saved into the body of Christ so that God can continue to be long suffering trying to save our group for, in, for a pattern. Paul is a pattern for those that should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting and have a, an everlasting life. So, Satan's policy is to conceal the mystery Christ gave to us through Paul. Eternal life is in heaven is what God is offering now. Eternal life on earth is off the table until after the rapture. We live in a new and different dispensation formerly kept secret. So, we must all be ready when the Lord opens the door to share the gospel and write the vision. And I'm going to tell you how you can do that easily. But first, let's just take a look at this. So, the hope. What was the hope of Peter? The hope of Peter was to live in the kingdom on earth. And he preached the gospel of the circumcision. And Paul's hope was to live in heaven. And he preached the gospel of the uncircumcision. So, two different messages. There's two different messengers, Peter and Paul, and two different gospels, the circumcision and to the uh, uh, and the gospel of the circumcision and the gospel of the uncircumcision, and two different audiences, the circumcision for Peter and the uncircumcision for Paul. But there's one Lord and one cross. So before the rapture, it's correct to follow Paul, and then after the rapture, it's correct to follow Peter. Law and grace do not mix. We cannot mix the instructions God gave to Peter with the instructions God gave to Paul. So, to quickly get through our commentaries, we have them in a three-volume set called Treasure Hunt. You can easily power through that. We also have Second Corinthians, a commentary. I love this book. And we have Rightly Dividing Second Corinthians Study Guide which has three little tracts in English and also in Spanish. All of our books are available on Amazon. You can read them for free if you have the Kindle uh, Unlimited app on um, Amazon.us. Our website is MarianneManley.com. Our YouTube channel, Salvation, comma, Rightly Dividing, comma, and the Rapture. Truth Be Told also carries our videos. The email is axe9grace at gmail.com. Find us on Rumble and X and WhatsApp and Facebook. Please comment on the Facebook video. It helps the ministry. And please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. And God bless.